Uh, thanks everyone for taking time to join this webinar. Today we're going to talk about FIB SEM analysis and some advanced techniques in materials characterization. So before I start, uh, here's a little bit about myself. My name is Wilson Ma and uh, I'm from chemistry and material science background. With over five years of microscopy and spectroscopy experiences, and over four years of clean room experience. After I got my PhD from the University of Alabama, I joined Nanolab as material scientist, mainly focused on materials microanalysis using FIB SEM. Here is the outline for today's talk. So first, I will give an introduction to our company, Nanolab Technologies and the Eurofins Material Science. Next, what is a smart chart and how do we use it? As well as a summary of technical services we provide at Eurofins Material Science. And in the main topic, we will cover fundamentals and basics of FIB SEM, as well as the broad applications in process control, failure analysis, and TM sample preparation. At last, I will introduce some advanced applications that can be done at Nanolab such as FIB fabrication, auto mapping, auto slice and view, 3D reconstruction, and lastly, cryofib. Nanolab Technologies was founded in 2007, headquartered in Mupitas, California, uh, joined Eurofins in 2018, and now a member of EAG and Eurofins Material Science. We have in total over 80 employees and more than half of them are technical engineers with advanced degrees. We are ISO certified and serve a wide range of industries, including semiconductor device and equipment manufacturers, data storage, displays, LEDs, optics, solar and battery materials, as well as academic institutions. We have broad range of services, including advanced microscopy, atom probe tomography, failure analysis, and surface analysis, such as XPS. And most importantly, we provide high quality data with fast turnaround time. To run the lab with such large volume, logistics become very important, and we do have a very strong support team, the production control team who ensure that our customers are taken care of and the lab operations run smoothly. And here I want to mention that we have secure storage of customer samples and data, which make sure customer's IP is well protected. Now lab offers many advanced characterization tools, and some of them are highlighted here. We have Titan TEM, uh, LEAP 5000 Atom Probe, SEM, uh, XPS, 3D X-ray, and uh, Dubeam system I will talk about today. Nanolab has a total of 16 Dubeam systems, including Helios G4 system. The maximum sample size is 4-inch wafer. Larger and uh, taller samples may need to be resized. And two of the Dubeam systems are equip equipped with EDS detector, for chemical composition analysis. Also, collaborations between different groups are very smooth here, which ensures that we can handle large, um, uh, large volumes of samples. In addition to the services provided at Nanolab, our sister lab, EAG, and mother company, Eurofins, is a big family. We have labs at over 20 locations in seven countries. We offer 40 plus analytical techniques with 300 plus instruments. We have, our, we have over 600 employees in Europe, Asia, and North America. We work together to provide diverse analysis to our customers. So now I want to show you a summary of analysis we provide at Eurofins Material Science, the smart chart, also called spectroscopy, microscopy, analytical resolution tool. The X axis here is the spatial resolution from one centimeter at the right 
down to one angstrom at the left. The y-axis is the chemical concentration. As you can see here, each bubble in the chart represents a kind of technique. Um, and within the box, you can easily select the suitable technique based on the spatial resolution and detection limit you need. For example, the detection limit of dynamic SIMs could go down to parts per trillion level, and the STEM is able to resolve the structure in Anstrom level. However, those techniques require a complicated and time-consuming sample preparation step. So today, we will focus on FIB SEM, which doesn't require much sample preparation and has a resolution from one centimeter all the way to sub 10 nanometers. And when equipped with EDS de detector, we could also get chemical composition information with resolution down to 100 nanometer. Now let's firstly briefly uh, talk about the basics and general applications of FIB SEM. Let's first take a look at the scale of objects that we have in our daily life. A human hair is about 60 micron, and red blood cells are about 9 micron. Bacteria vary from 150 nanometers to 2 microns. With the help of optical microscope, we're able to observe these things. We all know that because of the light diffraction limit, Conventional optical microscope could only resolve an object that is the half of the light wavelength. Visible light is ranging from 400 to 800 nanometers, so conventional optical microscope could only resolve something that is larger than 200 nanometers. But there are a lot of structures that are less than 200 nanometers, such as the COVID-19 virus, the DNA molecules, and nanoparticles. Furthermore, in semiconductor fabrication process, seven nanometer or four nanometer thin fat structure has become common. But optical microscope can never characterize such small sizes due to the light diffraction limit. However, the wavelength of an electron can be as low as picometers depends on the energy, which is much smaller than a photon. Therefore, the limitation of resolution is not the wavelength anymore. So using electrons for imaging purpose could provide much higher resolution than a normal optical microscope. Now let's take a look at uh, how does a scanning electron microscope and focused ion beam work. When a beam of electron is emitted to the sample, it could generate secondary electrons backscatter electrons, OJ electrons, and characteristic X-rays. Typically, an SEM image is generated by detecting the secondary electron, which could provide spatial resolution to sub 10 nanometers. A focused ion beam, or FIB, instrument is almost identical to an SEM, but uses a beam of ions rather than electrons. The focused ion beam can directly modify or mill the specimen surface via sputtering process. And this milling can be controlled within nanometer precision. In addition, ion beam assisted chemical vapor deposition can be used to deposit material with a level of precision similar to FIB milling. When combining scanning electron microscope and focused ion beam into the same system, this unique instrument we call DUBEAM or FIB SEM. Electron and ion beams are placed at a 52 degree angle at a coincident point near the sam sample surface, which allowing immediate high resolution SEM imaging of the FIB milled surface. Please be aware that SEM beam has an incident angle to the cross-section surface and FIB milling is a disruptive process. A retractable EDS detector could collect the X-ray signal emitted from the sample for chemical composition and quantification analysis. 
each system has multiple detectors that could provide secondary electron, backscatter electron, and ion beam images. For example, the EDT detector is normally for an overview image of the sample, whereas the Inlens TLD detector uses a semi-immersion type objective lens to improve the resolution, especially at low beam energy and short working distance. So it is often used for high resolution imaging purpose. A mirror detector is used in low voltage backscatter electron collection for simultaneous TLD secondary electron and MD backscatter electron image acquisition. A retractable circular backscatter electron detector provides the ability to capture information from all angles. It acquires all information in a single scan, so it uh, eliminates additional sample damage or contamination and could obtain charge-free imaging of non-conductive samples. Now let's see what a normal SEM can do. A normal SEM could provide high-resolution top-down images at a conductive surface. Like we can see the vias and trenches um, here, it is useful for surface characterization or thin film samples. But in the real manufacturer, there are metal layers, dielectric, polymers underneath the surface, which we cannot observe by normal SEM. So a cross section is needed for detailed layer information and critical dimension measurements. So now you may have a question on how does a FIB SEM work? Next, I would like to talk about the procedures for imaging a FIB cross section. First, if the sample surface is not conductive, we will need to sputter coat a thin layer of metal on the sample surface, such as gold, silver, or iridium, to prevent SEM charging. Next, if the sample surface is our interest, to avoid ion beam damage to the sample surface, E-beam assisted GIS sample protection will be down prior to FIB cross-sectioning. The protection can be TLs, carbon, or platinum. Then, platinum or tungsten can be deposited on the sample surface by ion beam assisted chemical vapor deposition. The gas is decomposed by the beam, depositing the non volatile products on the specimen surface, and the volatile products are pumped out by the vacuum system. After the local region is properly uh, covered, FIB cut will start. A coarse milling with large beam current is first deployed to dig a trench, which is large and deep enough to view the entire cross section with SEM. Then, smaller beam current will be used to fine polish the cross section to the region of interest. Here are cross-section SEM images from the logic area of application processor SOC chip from a smartphone device. Since secondary electrons are low energy electrons collected from the conduction or valence band of the specimen, it provides high resolution images which reveals the detailed surface information. In contrast, backscatter electrons are collected from the interaction between the electron beam and the specimen atom. Since heavy elements or high atomic number elements backscatter electrons more strongly than low atomic number elements. Therefore, um, they appear brighter in the image. Backscatter electrons are used to detect contrast between areas with different chemical composition. For example, the contrast between metal and dielectric on the right image is much higher than the left image. I want to mention that due to the large interaction volume of backscatter electrons, backscatter electron images are not as sharp as secondary electron images. Sample surface and cross section can be imaged by both electron beam and ion beam. When comparing uh, SEM images with ion beam images, we could also get different information from it. 
SEM images give high resolution structure information. Meanwhile, due to the high energy of ion beam, when metal surface is exposed to ion beam, different green orientation interacts differently with gallium ion, which we call ion channeling effect. So due to this effect, contrast is much more obvious between greens under ion beam images. So metal green information is able to be revealed. But ion beam images are not as sharp as SEM images and has damage to sample surface due to the bombardment of gallium ion. FIB SEM has the broad range of applications and one of the major applications we perform here is process control in a fabrication process. A FIB cross-section can reveal the tungsten filling status at top, middle, and bottom of the trenches or via. The tungsten seam size and distribution is another critical parameter in a fabrication process which we could provide. So here is an analysis we did on a 92 stack 3D NAND structure in the RAM of a, of a smartphone device. In this structure, memory cells are stacked vertically to increase the data storage capacity. The hard part of this sample is the high aspect ratio of the deep via. The aspect ratio here is more than 100 to 1, and we are able to provide a clean fit cross section which reveals the stack of a single column. Tungsten filling status and CD measurements can also be obtained. Another thing I want to uh, mention here is for this kind of structure, the FIB curtain effect is a FIB artifact that created during the FIB milling, which negatively affects the FIB cross section imaging. And here at NanoLab, we have special techniques to minimize this curtain effect. Another major part of the FIB SEM general application is the site specific defect analysis. Customers normally come on site and sit with us for this kind of analysis. For example, here we see a defect on the top surface of a sample. We would like to find the root cause of this defect. So, what to do next is we can perform a progressive FIB cut from any direction of the defect to expose the cross-section and find the root cause of this defect. During slice and veal, we can locate the center of the seed. And the defect is actually more than 30 micron deep from the surface. From the image here, we, we found the seed is located above the substrate. Then this specific location can be converted to a TM sample for more detailed imaging. And with the help of TM EDS, we realized that the seed contains aluminum, um, iron, titanium, uh, carbon, other than the tantalum oxide. So from imaging, we could learn the surface and cross-section morphology very well. However, Chemical composition information plays an important role in materials analysis. As I mentioned earlier, when an SEM is equipped with EDS detector, chemical composition and quantification can be revealed. So next I would like to show an EDS case study we did on a commercially available lithium ion battery from an electric vehicle. We first did an SEM scan in a large area for elemental survey. The purpose of elemental survey is to get an overview map of the material and define the specific region of interest. From the EDS mapping, we know that the battery anode is mainly consists of carbon and on the two sides of a copper charge collector. The cathode particles, which are on the two sides of aluminum charge collector, have strong signal of nickel and oxygen. The cathode and anode are well separated by carbon containing polymer material. And an interesting part we found here is the anode material is not only carbon, but contains some particles show silicon signal. 
So in order to find exactly the detailed information from it, we acquired another site-specific EDS map at a small region. In this analysis, we confirmed that the particles appear in the anode material are silicon oxide particles. We could also get quantification information like atomic percent or weight percent of each element. And here I would like to mention that SEM EDS has certain limitations. It could reveal information down to about 100 nanometers. If smaller feature needs to be analyzed, we recommend to do PM EDS or uh, yields analysis. Another major application of FIB-SEM is the TEM sample preparation. Here are the typical steps of how a TEM lamella is prepared. In this procedure, we first need to thoroughly protect the sample surface by E-beam protection and ion beam platinum. Then, Two trenches will be milled on both sides of the region of interest. After you cut, we could cut off both side and bottom of the lamella, only leaving a bridge between the lamella and the sample. Then we bring in a tungsten needle and weld the lamella onto it. After cutting off the bridge, the lamella is completely free from the sample surface. We next bring the needle and the, and the lamella close to a TM grid and weld it onto the grid, then cut loose the tungsten needle. So up to now, a TM lamella is successfully lifted out from the original sample. We will further thin the sample to less than 100 nanometers for TM imaging or EDS and EOS purposes. Nowadays, with the size of semiconductor device getting smaller and smaller, the stacks of memory device getting more and more, reviewing the information of a single functional part by FIB-SEM is very challenging. So TM analysis is needed for this kind of analysis. Actually, the majority of the FIB-SEM application here at NanoLab is TM sample preparation. Here I would like to show an example of TM sample preparation of a FinFact structure from a smartphone device. From the SEM image of the cross-section, we could get the overview of the gate fin structure, but it is extremely hard to get the detailed information from a single fin or gate and the dimension measurements. So we prepared a TM lamella of the fin on the gate. For this structure, we need to thin the sample to less than 40 nanometers in order to get the detailed structure information. From TM and yields, we could get the critical dimensions such as the pitch distance, the fin width and height, as well as a sub nanometer understanding of element distribution of fin fat. Another example is the 3D NAND structure I showed earlier by FIB SEM study. The aspect ratio here um, of the deep via is larger than 100 to 1. And the top, middle, and bottom are all at the same plane. In FIB SEM study, we can measure the critical dimensions and check the tungsten seams, but the dielectric information is hard to get. By TM analysis, the dielectric information around tungsten word line can be studied. In this case, we have the ability to deliver TM sample with site-specific cross-section of high aspect ratio vias and site-specific hotspot in the gate dielectric film. Moreover, we are also able to provide site-specific planar view TM sample preparation at a specific region. A plane at different depth that is parallel to the sample surface can be converted to a thin TM lamella. And uh, this example is mainly looking to check the amorphous layer thickness in memory channel, which helps to check the quality of high aspect ratio etch. 
we could measure the critical dimensions of the context, dielectric, and, sub and the substrate. Other than TM sample preparation, we could also fabricate micro or nano-sized pillar structure for 3D X-ray tomography or atom probe tomography, mainly used to check the green size and if there are any uh, voids within the sample for battery materials and mineral analysis. In this application, we need to use a circular mill pattern rather than a rectangular one. Until now, I have talked about the typical applications of FibSEM, which provides useful uh, morphology and chemical information. But with the new materials and systems developed, there is a need to push the barrier of FibSEM for such challenging applications. So next, I would like to talk about some advanced FibSEM developments for special samples or analysis requests, such as 3D view, imaging for a large area and sensitive samples. The application that I'm going to talk about today includes fib fabrication, auto mapping, auto slides and view, 3D reconstruction, and cryofib. Other than milling a cross section, fib could also do nano patterning or surface modification. The sample surface could be modified by both deposition and milling with accuracy down to sub 100 nanometers. Here shows a micro logo of NanoLab that we fabricated using ion beam milling. On the right hand side, a 10 by 10 nano array with 100 nanometers in diameter, one micron deep, and uh, 500 nanometers apart was created using the milling method. So after fabricating the arrays, you may have a question, how do we characterize it? So next, I'm going to introduce a solution that could characterize a large array for standard calibration. The technique is auto mapping. It allows us to take top-down SEM images at each individual location and then stitch them to a big map, just like yourself playing a puzzle game. In this application, after we choose an area of interest, the stage is automatically moved to take high resolution SEM images with some overlap be uh, between each other. The horizontal field of view, tile size, tile matrix, and imaging uh, dwell time can be set before the imaging pro uh, process. Then these images are stitched into a big map. In this way, we could have an overview of a large scaled picture with high resolution at each individual spot. And here I would like to show an analysis we did using auto mapping on the logic area of application processor SOC chip from a smartphone device. On, the, on this chip, we first exposed the copper vias at the surface by mechanical polishing. Then we found this area and selected a 100 by 100 micron region for analysis. In this area of interest, a tile matrix can be created based on the resolution requirement. In this case, I made a 22 by 30 tile matrix. Then the stage will move to each tile and take high resolution images. After all the images has been taken, we can stitch them to a big map. Now let's take a look at the comparison between the zoomed in image from the stitch map and from the digital zoom in. We can hardly define the edge of the copper via from the digital zoom in image, but from the stitched image, we're able to precisely define the edge as well as getting the detailed surface morphology. When analyzing the data, we first need to correct the background brightness and create contrast between vias and background. 
so the edge of the of each via could be detected. With the contrast between vias and background, our analyzing targets can be identified. Some targets were rejected because they overlapped with the skill bar or they are at the edge of the stitched tile and uh, not perfectly aligned. In total, 4,137 out of 4,275 vias were analyzed for size distribution. And we found an average via diameter of 500.4 nanometers with standard deviation of 20.6 nanometers. So the auto mapping uh, method provides a solution for accurate standard calibration in a large 2D scale. With the capacity of top-down 2D map analysis, if we would like to analyze a large amount of cross-sections, what we gotta do? So next advanced uh, FibSEM application I want to talk about is the auto slice and view and 3D reconstruction. The idea is just like yourself slicing an onion and puzzle it back. Besides a single cross-section, Auto Slice and View is an application that helps us analyze samples in a three-dimensional scale. The basic idea is to automatically cut multiple slices and take image for each slice at a block of material. By multiple slices, I mean hundreds or even thousands of slices. And in this way, we're able to get detailed information in a large scale. The step size of, uh, of slices can be set based on the size of the structure. For example, hundreds nanometers down to uh, sub 10 nanometers. Then the 2D cross-section images are stacked together and we can also save them into a video file. At last, those 2D images can be reconstructed into a 3D structure, which reveals every detailed information inside. This is a case study we did on a commercially available metal particle samples. The main purpose is to get the particle shape and size distribution. We applied auto slice and view to get large amount of 2D cross-section images with a slice step, step size of 20 nanometers. We could also save these images as a video file to uh, resolve the detailed information such as the particle shape and position in a more vivid and uh, continuous way. By using a VISO software, we could reconstruct the area into a 3D structure to reveal the detailed information inside and get particle size distribution out of it. In this sample, total of 743 complete particles were analyzed. And here we got an average of 78.2 nanometers in particle diameter. This analysis can be done at a large or small scale, uh, all depends on the region of interest. So this technique is very suitable for particle size distribution analysis and finding the root cause of a defect. This is another example of using auto slice and view 3D reconstruction. We did an analysis on a gate fin structure from a smartphone device. In this way, we could view the details of the process in a large scale. Moreover, if we apply certain brightness uh, threshold, we could only focus on the part that is our interest. The purpose of this kind of analysis is to find any uh, kind of defect such as killer particles without sitting in front of the machine doing fib cut the whole day. And here I want to emphasize that with the automation method, we will be able to observe the whole defect information in an uh, efficient way, but cannot uh, preserve the defect for TM analysis. With manual FIB method, the defect can be converted to a TM sample. 
So the last uh, advanced fib SEM application I want to talk about is the cryo fib. The first question is, why do we need cryo temperature fib? As we know, the focused ion beam physically bombards the sample and creates heat during milling. So it introduces damage to sensitive materials, like we see the lithium metal cross-section and uh, polymer fiber are severely damaged by room temperature fib. To solve this problem, using smaller current and beam accelerating voltage will decrease the damage, but will dramatically increase the milling time. And with the help of cryofib, we can use large beam current and voltage to make cross-sections with minimum damage. Here we can look at the schematic of a cryo-fib SEM setup. The cryo stage is cooled by a nitrogen gas flow, which is guided into a liquid nitrogen tank. And the gas flow tubes are well protected from the heat. In this way, the sample stage can be cooled close to uh, the nitrogen boiling point. Typically, for stable control, the operation temperature is at a negative 135 degrees C. A cold trap, which is normally 15 or 20 degrees lower than the stage, prevents water condensation to the sample surface. And in order to quickly load and unload sample, to the cryo stage without disturbing the vacuum and temperature, a quick loader is introduced. A metal sample holder uh, guarantees the heat conduction. Here we made a comparison between room temperature fib and cryo fib, where we could obviously look at the difference. So first, uh, temperature wise, Normal fib is operating at room temperature and cryo fib is normally operating at a negative 135 degrees C. For normal fib, we could load a sample as large as four inch or 10 centimeters in diameter. For, for cryo fib, sample size is restricted to 10 millimeters in diameter and 10 millimeters in height. Usually the maximum tilt angle for cryofib is around 58 degrees, depends on the cold trap position. And cryofib would only have a rotation range of plus minus 20 degrees in order to protect the gas flow tubes. It normally takes about two to three hours for the cryofib stage setting up and cooling down. And as a result, the benefit of cryofib is it protects the sample cross-section from ion beam damage. So it is very suitable for uh, soft polymer samples, lithium ion battery materials, biological specimen, and samples that are sensitive to water and temperature. Next, I would like to show some uh, cryofib applications that we obtained here at NanoLab. The first example is a polymer fiber from a Band-Aid. We saw the damage that caused by room temperature fib. The fiber is melted by the ion beam and the cross section is hardly recognized. In contrast, on the right-hand side, fiber uh, surface texture is well preserved by cryofib milling. So we are able to get the cross section information and also, if we take a closer look at the compared images, we could see uh, under room temperature fib, the fiber texture is damaged by electron beam scanning. But under cryo temperature, the fiber texture is well protected. So cryo temperature is able to protect sample from electron beam damage as well. The next example is a piece of commercially available lithium metal. Room temperature fib gives a very rough cross-section surface, which we could hardly resolve anything from it. Uh, cryofib cross-section on the right, meanwhile, creates a smooth and clean cross-section, which benefits for both SEM cross-sectioning 
and TEM sample preparation. We also gave a shot on a soft carbon tape surface. We could see that the soft carbon tape surface gets melted and deformed under the room temperature fib, while the surface texture and cross-section is well preserved by cryo SEM and fib milling. The last example is a cross-section with different material hardness. On the left, we could see there are a lot of cracks in between materials because the two materials have different sensitivity to temperature and ion beam. In contrast, cryofib provides a crack-free cross-section in between different materials on the right. Now let's summarize today's talk. In this webinar, we learned that FibSEM has capability to resolve structure down to sub 10 nanometers without complicated sample preparation step. And uh, it fits for most solid uh, materials characterization. It has broad applications in different aspects, including cross-section imaging, hotspot detection, TM sample preparation, and surface modification. If special request is needed, cryofib could protect sensitive materials from ion beam damage. Auto slides and view 3D reconstruction has the ability to reveal the detailed structure information in a three-dimensional scale. And auto mapping is able to provide a large-scale top-down SEM map with high resolution in each individual spot. Now we are accepting sample submission for auto mapping, 3D reconstruction, and cryofib. You're very welcome to submit samples for these analysis. With that, I would like to thank all teams uh, at NanoLab for their support and valuable discussion. This presentation couldn't be complete without their support. I would like to express a special thank to Ife from EAG Kaifer for data analysis and uh, processing on the auto mapping samples. And thanks Rena and Stuart for their great marketing work and arrangement through this uh, webinar series. Now let's take a look at our smart chart again. Today we talked about the applications of focused ion beam scanning electron microscope, which has a spatial resolution down to sub 10 nanometers. With SEM EDS, we could detect chemical composition to sub one atomic percent. Please stay tuned for our future smart chart webinars. Finally, these are the reasons why I choose Eurofins material science. We provide our customers high quality data with fast turnaround time. And one thing I want to emphasize is that we have complied with the latest COVID-19 regulations from, uh, from state and local governments and CDC. Now, all of our locations throughout the world are open, but we may have limitations on customers' visits. 